park really weird? Ah, no, you're probably good. Yeah? Who's, who's, whose car is that? That's Matt's car. Okay. Are we still shooting today? Yes. I have a horse, of course. But, it, but it's raining. If we stopped doing what we do in Vancouver because it rains, we wouldn't do anything. What do you think, Chris? You know what? It's a classic camera situation. It's like a camera bag situation. Everything is awesome about this lens so far. I just like haven't mentally gotten over the fact that it's an f4 lens. I, I can get over it. I can get over it. I can't. The funny thing is, on your 16 to 55 2 8, you have this at f4 right hey, now. Hey, that was only because I was shooting out there right now. It's, it's, at 2 8. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, sure. But you know, yeah, but you got your f4 at f22 right now. What's going on, guys? We're in uh, North Vancouver on top of the shipyards. Uh, shooting a quick video on the 16 to 80 f4 the new Fuji lens coming out. Yeah, let's get into it Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalk.com and welcome to BHD Studios. As promised, this is my first impressions shooting review of the brand new Fujifilm XF 16-80 F4 Constant ROISWR. As my previous video, I mentioned this is a pre-production copy. Thank you Fujifilm Canada for sending this out to me early to take a look at but I was told any findings that I find, uh, I have to wait for the production and that's fair enough. But so on this video, I decided to team up with Chris Janakis or Chris Meets Chris. He came with me to Hong Kong and he did a few little videos for me. He did the, the intro to this video and we were over in North Vancouver and we went down to the shipyards to do some video tests with the uh, 16 to 80 and the lens that we used to compare it against was which we think is probably the one that maybe those that are buying these pro bodies are comparing against is the uh, 16 to 55 f 2.8 r lmwr and i actually am shooting with that lens right now on the xt3 for video and it's a really great professional lens the only thing that it's missing if it's something that you want is the uh image stabilization. So a lot of people with that lens like it on the X-H1 because of course the sensor here stabilizes. And so this lens, this 16 to 80 with six stops of stabilization on the X-T3 or the X-T30 is probably a, a great combo. So we, did, we didn't have the X-T3 at the time, but we did have an X-T30. So thank you, Jenna, for loaning that to us. This is this could be this could be a really attractive kit for somebody. Yeah. Um, it visually is front heavy, but weight wise, it's actually quite quite balanced. Even if you're holding it here, but the nice part is you can kind of hold it with one hand. And now I have the XT3, and I'm gonna do further tests. But we really are waiting for the production copy. So we went down, we vlogged with the 16 to 80, which for for us. Uh, Chris and I, Chris is probably like 5'6", I'm 5'5". Five five. He had his arm out almost all the way and we'll throw in an insert. Okay, we're gonna do the uh, vlogging portion now. Is this good enough? Um, I've got the 16 to 80 on at 16 and I'm holding it, um, I'm not at a right angle, but it's, what, what angle would you call this? Uh, your arm angle? Yeah. I don't it, know. It's comfortably in front of me. If it's a little zoomed in, then that's kind of what you're getting, unless you've got uh, giant arms, which neither Take and I do. And you can see that, f for me, I like the 1024. I like being about this close when I vlog, especially if I'm indoors in tight spots. So for some, that uh, 24 millimeter equivalent is kind of what they're used to. A lot of ones that use the RX100 series or the Canon G9, G7, G5 series, they, those things have about a 24 millimeter equivalent. They're okay vlogging at that distance. For me, I want to go a little bit wider. I want to be able to go about 21 millimeter equivalent. So on the APS-C system, about 14 millimeters at least is what I want. 
Uh, so uh, it was a little bit far for me, even for Chris, he wished it was a little bit wider so he can bring it in a little closer, but it still worked out. And one of the things we were testing for is stability. We wanted to see the six stops to stabilization, but again, because this is pre-production, we can't make a final conclusion, but we'll throw in the insert, uh, sort of a quick test. I was walking towards Chris, and then Chris was kind of backing up. So this is not that scientific because, you know, each time we do it, you know, he could be, I mean, Chris has a really nice, he's very, he's a cinematographer, he's a videographer. He knows how to kind of soup in and out and really smoothly. And uh, we'll, we'll throw in that, that test right now. The image stabilization inside this lens is quite phenomenal. Uh, we just did the tracking test and it was it was pretty good. I, I will say from looking at the screens that this is a little bit better, but this is also a lot bigger and a lot more weight and a lot more expensive actually. So as you can see, for Chris and myself, when we looked at it, it looked like the X-H1 with the 16 to 55 28 stabilized better because you'd assume that the 16 to 80 with this would have better stabilization because six stops on the lens well, I'm pointing there six stops on the 16 to 80 and you got five stops on the body and I did talk to Billy Billy said that um, uh, that the camera will decide the algorithm will decide uh, what part of the stabilization so this five axis stabilization what will be given to the sensor and what will be given to the lens for stabilization and it will make a combination and give you the best combo between the two. And Fujifilm has told us that that algorithm is in the X-H1 versus the 5.5 or 5 stops on uh, on just the sensor alone with the 16 to 55. And so technically it should be better. And again, this is pre-production. We don't know for sure. But one of the things that Chris and I kind of thought is that just the extra weight. So Chris is backing up this way and with the extra weight and you know, often people even have a cage with the little handle and they would kind of, uh, kind of go backwards like that. Uh, just the weight itself could have helped Chris to get better stabilization on the X-H1 versus even the X-T30. So that's why I thought the X-T3 would be good because it is a bigger, heavier camera than the X-T30, still lighter than the X-H1. I'm beginning to think that maybe the weight, the weight of this, of this kit versus this actually helps with the stabilization. Um, it's definitely heavier though, so keep that in mind that after shooting this for a full day, it's it's gonna it's gonna weigh down on you more than than this is. And uh, first first look on the back of the camera, I'm quite impressed with the stabilization in this lens. So we're gonna do further tests, especially when we get a production copy. But you can still see the stabilization is great. And one of the, the other tests we did was to go all the way out to 80 on the 16 to 80 and then do kind of a handheld 
uh, and it's very stable and, it, and it's very nice and we compared it with the 1655 at 28 all the way out and you can see the difference uh, between the two Chris and I both liked the 80 at f4 versus the 55 at 2.8 because of the compression you can sort of see the background has you know has it, it's more blurry as I mentioned before you can obtain that shallow depth of field not only from a a larger aperture but you can also get it through uh, a more telephoto more narrow field of view the compression the compression is really nice at 80 like we just did the test between the 55 at 55 and the 80 at 80 and but 2.8 versus f4 2.8 versus f4 but in this in this one scenario the the f4 doesn't really is not that much different from the 2.8 and the compression is way better so at 80 f4 i'd take that over 55 at 2.8 and you let us know down below what you prefer. We didn't do a lot of that as well, so we'll, we will do more of that testing. And again, this is just the, the video test, just to get an idea of how this lens works. And, and Chris, he, he liked, he was actually kind of surprised. He thought maybe the F4 would be a big deal. Outdoors, F4, it worked great. Now, he did say indoors at 2.8 makes a big difference, especially doing product shots. So the next video we're gonna create is stills and then once we get the production copy we'll amalgamate all of the video tests as well as the stills test and he will as a videographer give his thoughts on what he thinks uh you know about this lens here compared to the 1655 and then as a stills photographer for myself primarily let you know what what i think but so far uh, i've been taking some stills i really like this lens but for final tests, we have to wait for the full review. So thanks for watching, Chris. Thank you so much for uh, helping me on this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to Chris as well because he has his own channel, his own videos. They look awesome. So we'll talk to you soon, guys. Happy shooting. Click, click.